Now, Mendel's experiment. The first was to cross true breeding pea plants that had different characteristics with each other. Second, he would examine the peas and record the results. Third, he would collect the seeds that were the result of the cross and then plant these seeds and collect data on them. So eventually you'll hear me refer to the parent generation, the F1 or the first filial generation, and F2, the second filial generation. It all comes back to this basic idea. So for example, if we look at seed shape and round and wrinkled as our starting point, parent number one is round, parent number two is wrinkled. The second or the first filial generation equals the F1 generation. The third, which is the F1 generation crossed by the F1 generation, produces the F2 generation or the second filial generation. Now, a monohybrid cross, if you break it down, the word mono refers to one. So a monohybrid cross is a cross that is looking at only one trait. So for example, if we're looking at seed shape, that is our, our one trait, and we're looking at two contrasting parts within that, which would be round or wrinkled. So the seed is either round or wrinkled. Now, what Mendel found in his first generation, or the F1 generation, was that it had all round seeds. So the next season, Mendel planted 253 F1 plants. When he crossed the F1 plants by the F1 plants to produce the second filial generation, or the F2 generation, he produced 7,324 seeds, or he collected that many. Of those, he found 5,474 were round, 1,850 were wrinkled. Now, some key terminology here. A dominant trait is when one characteristic expresses itself over the other. So if round shows up over wrinkled, round becomes the dominant trait. If tall is dominant over dwarf, tall becomes the dominant trait. Again, these are in red, so you should be making note of them or double-checking your vocabulary preloading activity. Recessive is the trait that does not show through in the first generation. So if round exerts itself over wrinkled and round is dominant, wrinkled then becomes the recessive trait. So when he repeated these experiments for all of the other characteristics, and in each case he saw a 3 to 1 ratio. So he collected in the F2 generation 705 purple flowers to 224 white flowers, and he had a 3.15 to 1 ratio. For, let's look at seed color. Seed color, he looked at yellow seeds and green. He had 6,022 yellow to 2,001 green, a 3.01 to 1 ratio. If you check out the ratios that he has listed in each of these here, you'll notice that all of them go to 3 dominant to 1 recessive, or a 3 to 1 ratio. You will end up with 3 green pods for every 1 yellow pod that you see in the F2 generation. Mendel also put forward some laws of heredity. The first law that he talked about is the law of unit factors in pairs. Genetic characters are controlled by unit factors that exist in pairs in individual organisms. Now remember that Mendel didn't know about genes, he didn't know about chromosomes or meiosis or how the process of cell division worked, but so he referenced genes as unit factors. So, for example, in a monohybrid cross for a round and wrinkled, it provides three combinations. You can have two factors for round, one factor for round, one factor for wrinkled, or two factors for wrinkled. Every individual must have one of these specific combinations. So essentially what we're talking about is that each parent, so if you have parent one and parent number two, each parent has two characteristics or two alleles which make up the gene. So if parent number one has well, let's see, if parent number one is round, you could think of it as two R's to represent round. You could think of parent number two as pure breeding or true breeding for wrinkled, so we could use two W's. Now, the use of the R and the W here is just for explanation in this example. We'll talk about how to use letters shortly. Now, from this, parent number one can produce only one type of gamete. They can produce an R. Parent number two can only produce one type of gamete, which is a W. Now, that is the first generation. So the first generation, you will always end up with an RW, which equals round. Now, it equals round because 
the round allele is expressing its dominance over the recessive allele. Now, when you cross these two together, you take a look over here, and we take the F1, so it's showing the round, but it's still carrying the wrinkled. This parent can produce an R or a W as a possible gamete. This parent can produce an R or a W. So when you put them together, for example, a monohybrid cross for round and wrinkled provides three combinations. Here's your three combinations. Parent number F1 number one can produce an R. It can also take an R from parent number two. You could also have an R from the first parent and a W from the second parent. You could essentially have a W from the first parent and an R from the second parent. Now essentially both of these are going to show the round trait. Now the last thing that you can have is a W from first one and a W from the second one so you would have two little w's. Now this would code for round, this would code for round, and this would code for wrinkled. So when he's talking about a monohybrid cross for round and wrinkle providing three combination, you get two factors for round, one round, one wrinkled, and two factors for wrinkled. That's what he's referencing in that spot there. So as we move on to the next slide, we have the law of dominance. The law of dominance is what we talked about with regard to the first one, is when two unlike unit factors are responsible for a single character and are present in a single individual. One unit factor is dominant to the other, which is said to be recessive. So we've talked about those words before. So when you had the round and you had the wrinkled, we talked about which one was dominant. We said that the round will always show up. So, moving on to our next slide. The law of segregation, and again, this is refer referencing what happens in meiosis, and he didn't know about this till later. During the formation of gametes, uh, Mendel said that the unit or the paired unit factors separate from each other, so that this should say, so that each gamete receives one or the other. So, if you think back to one parent had the round and the wrinkled trait in the F1 generation. They can either give a round or a wrinkled. So when they go through meiosis and we talk about chromosomes, we could talk about this one carrying the round and this chromosome here carrying the wrinkled. Again, that should be a W right there. Now, when these chromosomes initially get divided, they each go to separate sides. Then you have the second mitotic division, so then you would be left with this one which has R, this one which still has R. Each of, each of these would be in a new gamete. Same for here. You'd have this one which says a W and this one which says a W, and each of these would be in its own cell. Now, Mendel's reasoning was that the P1 plants that were true breeding round had two unit factors for round. The P2 plants, or the parent other plants, also had two unit factors for wrinkled. So we were using this before, round and wrinkled. Number three, the gametes of the parents each received one unit factor. So we had round from one, wrinkled in the other. The gametes each got an R and a W. Number four, after fertilization, all F1 plants had one unit factor round and one unit factor wrinkled. So that was what we referenced there. Number five, when the F2 gametes are formed, there are four possible random outcomes. And again, this goes back to that other slide that we talked about, the four possible combinations. Round, 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 wrinkled, 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 round. These essentially will produce the same type of offspring. Both will show the round trait. 
Number seven, according to the law of dominance, one and four will be round. One and four will be round as well. As well as number two will be round there as well. Therefore, you get a total of three to one ratio. Now, some genetics terminology. Now, important thing to remember is that a gene is Mendel's unit factor. And a unit factor is found at a specific point on the chromosome, and it carries information for a specific trait. So it could be seed shape. So if we were to draw a single-stranded chromosome, we could say that this would be seed shape, or the gene for seed shape. It could be the gene for eye color, hair color, whether you can roll your tongue or not, but that's essentially what a gene is. Now, on a chromosome, there are many, 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 many different types of genes. So each chromosome carries many genes. Uh, another really important word to remember is phenotype. And phenotype means the physical appearance of a trait. So for example, if the plant is tall or short, the seed color is yellow or green. So phenotype is what you see. So uh, the other way to remember it is phi P for the physical appearance. You have to know these terms because when you get to a genetics question, these are how the question is going to be explained to you. The next one, genotype, this refers to the letters that are assigned to this to that specific trait. So we might assign letter A that we're going to work with to make it easier to go through the different traits. Now, another really important term is the word allele. Allele is an alternate form of a single gene. So we talked about you could have round or you could have wrinkled. Each of those are a type or a different part of the gene, or, sorry, a type of the gene. So the unit factors round and wrinkled are alleles that make up seed shape. Now, some hints for working with genetics traits. Traits are always assigned different types of letters. The recessive trait is usually what provides the letter designate. So if there's round and wrinkled, and you know that wrinkled is recessive, then we take a big W for round and a little w for wrinkled. So the first letter of the recessive trait provides the letter that we use. If we all consistently use the same letter, it makes it easier for us to talk about those genetics problems when we go through them in class. Now, if you were to solve it using an R, you would still work out with the same information, but it's, it just helps us to be all on the same page. So the other thing is please keep your writing neat enough so that if you're dealing with Ws, that you know there's a difference between big W and little W. So you might want to make big W in printing and a little W in writing. When you get in a rush, things tend to start to look the same. Now, capital letters refer to the dominant trait. And if you have lowercase, it refers to the recessive trait. So simply keep that in mind when you're putting them down on paper. Letters generally appear in pairs, so please make sure that if you're trying to describe the genotype for round, round being the phenotype, and I ask you to give me the genotype, the letters for what, how to code for round, you would talk big W, big W. If I asked you to give me the genotype for a wrinkled, wrinkled again being the phenotype, I want the letters, you would use two little w's. Now, if you put something that has a big W and a little w, in this case, the capital letter is always what takes precedence, so the big W would code for round. Remember that if you get the letters, that will tell you what it looks like. So if you get the genotype, that tells you what it looks like. If I said the genotype is this, that tells you that the seed shape is round. Two more really important words that you should be referencing on your vocabulary page, and that is homozygous. Homozygous means that both alleles are the same. So two big W's or two little W's. So remember, homo refers to the same if you're looking at that as a prefix. If you're looking at hetero, hetero means different. So when the, when the alleles are different, that gives you an example of something that's heterozygous. Now, important to know the difference between these because I may refer to homozygous or heterozygous traits, and you will need to know which way to code them.